As I drove me and my beautiful baby girl towards the evening of seriously created beautiful beings about to breathe life into their words and share their flow. A disturbing scene to the left caught our eye. Police cordons, people looking on frantic. Caution, forensic tent. Another victim lay murdered, hidden, not so discreetly and yet sadly neatly out of plain sight in broad daylight. My heart sank and my throat was choked for how many more of our poor little boys gonna lose their fight and lose their life? All because they're foolishly choosing to carry knife. I found my mind reading with a truly sickening feeling as I recalled that day way back when my oldest son could have lost his life before they barely began. He was 13 at the time, stabbed in the back of his head a centimetre away from nearly dead and slashed across his arm and his shoulder, a boy not even remotely old enough to understand just how close he came to seeing stars and being prematurely sent forth to bang on the gates and wait for his halo and wings. My little king, almost stolen from this hit earth to join the ever bulging tear-filled clouds that oh so sadly now darken way too many broken hearts. But he was lucky and so was I because he got stitched up and got to grow up, well, almost, maybe, nearly, somewhat. But sadly there's still too many foolish men who seemingly believe in that this and that is all that's going for them. What do you know about the streets, mum? He brashly asked and without hesitation I begin to explain just how many friends I personally done lost and how much pain remains and how much sadness in my heart for lives that only ever got to start for unwritten futures because futile fuse caused big gaping wounds that brought them crashing down. Breath and heartbeats. <sighs> Never again. No sound. Live by the sword, die by the sword, son, I tell him. Truth be heard is absurd and trust it's not scorn, but be warned. We need to show our boys love and encourage and empower them to embrace this their life and reinstill self-worth and self-love and love of life because way too many families are for big gaping holes and way too many of our young ones told in the way now laying cold with stories started, yet now departed. And chapters only merely scratching the surface of life with also many more to go. But now, agonizing that there be no more words. So you see, I wish with all my aching heart these youths our future would just believe and truly see the beauty beneath unwanted scars, screwed up faces, angst and hatred, postcode wars unjustly caused by a system that's wrongly branded them within a box that no one need be in. Please, oh please, I beg of thee, take a step back and really see. Look deep within your heart and have faith in your abilities. Now ask yourself this one dark question. What am I willing to die for? Now flip the script and see a blessing and ask yourself another question. What is it that I want to live for? Do you feel the difference? It's time to stop allowing the mind to burn, twisted and torn, battered and worn. Distrust, feeling lost, abused and abandoned, twisted thoughts of anger, furiously fueled from systematic rejection, hurt. I overstand your frustrations. Turbulent turmoil, sadly, madly causing bound of head from the heavy detrimental suggestion of acceptance. Well, fuck that shit and screw the system. Let's come together, embrace and empower our young kings. Tell them straight, firm but soft, filled with compassion, faith and love. Stand up, rise up above it all. Fear nothing other than your own downfall. Open up, be free. Release the tension seemingly gripping in, too tightly stricken in delicate souls from expansion. There's a cleansing, undeniable blessing in openly, honestly bearing of soul. Let out the hurt, allowing the light. Once and for all, please put down the knives. Instead I beg pick up a pen, let ink be the only thing to stain skin. Bars, not scars my friend, for our words are without question the mightiest of all weapons.